only one topic obsesses the whole of South Africa, the whole country, and that is what's going to happen in the 2024 election. Is the ANC going to drop below 50% for the first time in its history? Which political party will rise up to become the dominant opposition? What's going to happen with the DA and the PA and the IFP and the EFF? Every single Tom, Dick and their dog Harry has an opinion on this. And we read those opinions on Twitter and in the media every single day. But what I find is that a lot of these hot takes are not supported by data. They're not supported by real information about who South Africans really are voting for and therefore what's going to happen in 2024. So here's our exclusive interview with one of the people who is completely data obsessed. His name is Wayne Sussman. He is literally one of South Africa's go-to data analysts on voting patterns and trends across the nation. And I am going to ask him all of those crucial questions so we can find out who is South Africa actually voting for. If it's your first time, remember this is South Africa's watch party because South Africa is a movie. Why not come watch and try and figure it out with us? We also have a podcast which you can get on Spotify or Apple Podcasts absolutely free. That is the longer discussion with people like Wayne from every single episode. And before we get into the interview, my only request of you is please click subscribe. It costs you nothing but makes a huge difference as we develop this project in the run up to the 2024 election. Wayne Sussman, thank you so much uh, for joining me. Before I ask you any questions that make me seem smarter than I am, you have to pick a beanie. Purple's good. I think the color coordination will work. Yeah. Um, do I wear the label facing the front or the back? So, it, I mean, it, it is a local brand. So if you want to push the bill, you can. They are great. Oh, you okay. look fabulous. Okay, great. With all of the trends that you've been seeing in the last few years, do you foresee the ANC struggling to make a majority in 2024? Just to remind voters that the ANC got 57 and a half, and I always round up from 0.5 upwards. So let's say 57 and a half, 58 percent in the last election. In order for them to fall below 50%, they would need to fall by about, four, I think it's 14.5%, okay? So that would take them to proportionally. Um, that's a major slide. They fell from 62 to 57.5 in the last election. For them to fall from 57.5 to under 50 would be a very poor achievement by the ANC. It's hundreds of thousands of people not voting for them again. What makes it less likely, and I'll tell you where, okay, let's... Uh, Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal. Why are those two provinces important? Because these are where most of the voters are in South Africa. In the latest census in 2022, the province which had the third most amount of voters, eclipsing the great province of the Eastern Cape, was the Western Cape. We know that that's been a sorry story for the ANC over the last few years. So if you have the ANC treading water now in Gauteng, the province you and I currently sit in, and in KwaZulu-Natal, which is what Jacob Zuma's great gift to the ANC, it turned it into an, a, um, an uh, overwhelming majority for the ANC. From IFP before, yeah. That's correct. Then the ANC starts to worry. But what's the good news for the ANC? Dan, that's what I always try to do my reporting. I try to find, find stories you should worry about and stories you should be hopeful about. The Eastern Cape and Limpopo. Why is this important? Because this is where the fourth and fifth most amount of South Africans live. And generally, certainly in the 2019 election, in the 2021 election, and in most, not all, but in most of the by-elections since then, ANC support is rock solid in these two provinces, and that's the ANC's path to 50% and above. Okay, so everybody in South Africa talks about um, election or like election season politicians where suddenly they're trying to fix ESCOM, suddenly Shoshaloza Mail is running from Johannesburg to Cape Town again, suddenly, uh, you know, ANC people are on the street trying to fill in potholes. From your perspective, what are the major ticket issues that are infuriating even ANC supporting South Africans that w could potentially decide whether or not they do bother to go and vote for the ANC again in 2024? I think it's load shedding, infrastructure. I think for the first time in a democratic election, an issue like crime might be a serious issue because this isn't, remember the Democratic Party, Tony Leon ran very strongly on an anti-crime ticket in 99. It helped them somewhat, but I think this is an election where 
crime for across the board could affect South Africans. And then the collapsing infrastructure and lack of services. These are the things which I think are angering South Africans right now. But I also think the ANC have tricks up their sleeve as well. Social grants, number one. The ANC is trusted more than any other political party on social grants. Even though the execution of social grants isn't always perfect, Voters across the board, particularly in rural areas, trust the ANC more than the EFF or any other political party. I think we are going to see, and I might, uh, like uh, the Secretary General of the ANC, eat some humble pie, but I think the calculus of the ANC is that um, the energy challenges in this country will be in a better place by, we don't know when the election will be, but by May next year. And the ANC will say, look, we are turning the corner. We are winning the war against load shedding. But I think particularly social grants. Just one interesting factoid, and that's why, as I said to you, that I love exploring the nooks and crannies of this country. Guiani in Limpopo in 1999, they were stuck without water for one month uh, before the elections. And I focus very strongly on Guiani. Sure, the ANC's vote went down. It went down from 75%. I know you're doing the interview, but any idea what their vote percentage went down to? Uh, 58. 74%. Oh, that's just 1%. 1%. Wow, no and water large, for a month. No water for a month. Wow. Large swaths of Guiana. And that's why I think people also have to... Uh, differentiate between ANC, the governing party, and ANC, the political party. In many parts of this country, the ANC's political party machinery is a, a, it's, it's something to be impressed of. Not in the whole country. We know that the ANC have many challenges, but in places like Guiani, that party machine is untouchable. So we've heard about the ANC, and I wanted to know from Wayne, based on all of the data that he's been looking at of by-elections across the country, what are the dominant trends to look out for that could well affect the 2024 election? Off the top of my head, five trends. The ANC have challenges with black voters in Gauteng province. The ANC changed premiers midstream, bringing in Panyaza Lesufi. Now, I know no politicians any everyone's cup of tea, but Panyaza Lesufi is someone who's incredibly media savvy, who's someone who's trying to create seismic change and shift in Gauteng province from the, um, from the cr cr crime wardens, etc., uh, change in schools, etc. The ANC is saying we need our best shot and they brought Lesufi in. When I look at by-elections, Dan, I don't just look at the wards, I look at the voting districts. So we've had recent by-elections in DA areas which have pockets of black voters. And those trends are not good for the ANC. And the trends in places like Lufering Township, um, uh, on the edge of Soweto, other parts of Gauteng, the ANC are struggling amongst black voters. That's the first trend. The second trend, KwaZulu-Natal. Yes, the IFP surging KwaZulu-Natal. But who's... Lunch, are they stealing on the playground more? They're stealing some ANC lunch, but they're stealing a lot of EFF lunch. How did the EFF surge in the 2019 elections? And how did they grow modestly in the 2021 elections? Was because of KwaZulu Natal. The EFF have deep trouble in KwaZulu Natal right now. Now, I'm hearing that some people are saying the local leadership's unpopular, but Malema is still popular. We, I just saw now that the EFF are launching their campaign at Moses Mabida Stadium. That's going to challenge my narrative that the EFF's in trouble in KwaZulu Natal. But if the IFP are hurting the ANC in KwaZulu Natal, but especially hurting the EFF, that's going to make it very, very interesting with, a moon, with the multi party chart of the IFP, the DA, and Action SA in KwaZulu Natal versus the ANC and others. Trend number two. Trend number three is that by and large, and my uh, assumptions have been challenged in the last few weeks because of interesting by-election results, but as I said earlier, the ANC is rock solid in Eastern Cape and Limpopo. This is important. Dan, here's my useless fact for the day, which I, <laughs> which I love parading. Go for it. You dream and think of Mangawung Bloemfontein a lot, Dan. You can admit it, okay? <laughs> Let me give you a fact. When last did you think of, we might, I know it's a key part of our soccer culture in South Africa, Toyandu, Tulamela Municipality yeah. in Limpopo. Sure, much less. Okay. Tulamela Municipality, Toyandu in Limpopo. The ANC got 12,000 votes less 
than the entirety of the Mangaung metro. So when we look at South Africa, we often look at it through an urban metro lens, yes. through our major cities. I've just told you about a municipality in Popo, where the ANC almost matched its vote share in the whole of Mangaung metro. Wow. That's a remarkable statistic. There are still many voters in rural parts of Eastern Cape and rural parts of Limpopo who the ANC believes it will be able to get back. That's the ANC's good, good news story. Assumption number um, four, okay, the DA have a real tough time with Gayton McKenzie and the Patriotic Alliance right now. They have been doing very well in by-elections in colored areas, the not PA, just yes. the Patriotic Alliance, Gayton McKenzie Patriotic Alliance, not just in the southern part of Gauteng, but you're seeing it increasing in the Western Cape and the Northern Cape and recently in a uh, small colored community in Bloemfontein as well. That's interesting. So we hear the story that the DA are secure in the Western Cape. The thing which keeps the DA up the most at night in the Western Cape today is the Patriotic Alliance. Sure. The challenge for the Patriotic, Patriotic Alliance is going to be, can we do what we do on a by-election day on a national election day, sure. i.e., um, that's going to be more challenging. And scenario number five, and this is interesting, Dan, which I've picked up. People don't know this, but the EFF went backwards in Rustenburg and Polokwane in 2021. Why is this important? When we think of the origin story of the EFF, Julius Malema is from Polokwane, Julius and Marikana. Marikana was very important in the formative years of the EFF. And I've just told you bad news about the EFF and Cousin Natal. The good news for the EFF is that in, for some reason in small towns in South Africa, particularly in the northern parts of South Africa, they're doing very well. Okay. The coal mining town of Brayton in Pumalanga, Schmitzdruff in the northern Cape, Mahikeng in the northwest, uh, Vormranstadt, the townships near there in the northwest. This is interesting. Are the EFF going to – because that's bad for the ANC. Those small towns are where they've done very, very well. But those are the five things – you asked me a long question and I've punished you by giving you the longest answer you've ever heard. I mean, that was exactly what I wanted. So I don't feel punched. I feel like I got a punished. birthday present. <laughs> okay, punished. Okay, so then the next key question is, but local government elections are often very different to national elections for a bunch of reasons. The first one is that national elections often have a much higher turnout uh, because it's matters of the president to national importance. The second reason is that very, very often voting for a president musters a lot of people because a president is the... I mean, the most popular person in a country, even in representative democracy, that's the case now, because Ramaphosa consistently outpolls not only his own party, but any other politician in South Africa. And so... I know that this is a tough question, but how much can we infer from 2021's local elections for 2024's national elections? Leadership matters. You spoke about Ramaphoria earlier. We know if we drill down, that's why I always drill down in the data. This was a factor in Santon in 2019, that you saw people splitting their vote for Ramaphosa and for the DA and the provincial ballot. Okay. The challenge is Ramaphosa, even though he's the most popular person in the ANC and remains the most popular person in the ANC, he's not as popular as he was five years ago. We know that John Sternhazen isn't as popular um, as Musi Maimani was in the 2016 election and Helen Zilla was in the 2014 election. We know that this is the third. Julius Malema is, is a, comes across as a spring chicken, is a spring chicken. He's young, but he, Dan, he has another useless fact for the day. <laughs> Um, is the third longest lasting leader of a current party in parliament after Kenneth Mesher's African Christian Democratic Party in Bantu Olomisa's United Democratic Movement. He isn't as, he's not this novel new candidate. So it's very clear from our conversation that one of the biggest factors in what will happen in 2024 is which way KwaZulu Natal votes. And it's so unpredictable because the ANC is going up and down, the EFF is going up and down, the IFP is coming back up, the DA is getting stronger every single election in KZN. And so I wanted to hear from Wayne what he thinks might happen based on what he is seeing happening in KZN. So we've spoken about it at length already, uh, but the dominant trends being that the ANC picked up an extraordinary groundswell of Zulu voters off the IFP during Jacob Zuma's presidency. And there's been a lot of speculation recently about Ramaphosa's very soft and gentle treatment of Zuma and his camp in general is to try and keep them on side. Uh, then to add to that mix is what you've already spoken about with the with the IFP picking up EFF votes in Kusuda Natal. And quite extraordinarily last night or yesterday, Julius Malema had some very, very inflammatory things to say about the IFP directly. He 
said his one quote was that every single IFP leader is corrupt and the only way you get a job in an IFP municipality is through sex for work. So that fight is coming together. But interestingly, also to add to that mix is somebody who I interviewed last week, which is Chris Pappas, who is the premier candidate for the Democratic Alliance, the only DA ruling mayor in KwaZulu Natal in Umgeni municipality in the Midlands. And although he's not he's not saying at all that they're going to win 50%, he does seem to believe that an IFP DA combo can pick up as many votes as an ANC EFF combo uh, combo in KwaZulu Natal. What does the data suggest to you? Yeah, so when we look at KwaZulu Natal broadly speaking, there are four areas of KwaZulu Natal. There is the north northern part of KwaZulu Natal, which is traditional IFP strongholds, places like Ulundi, etc., Nongoma. Um, and by the way, the IFP made big inroads in large towns like Richards Bay and Newcastle in the last election, which was a great result for them because it changes this narrative of them just being a rural party. Those are key parts of the economy. Then we move to the Ngungluvu district, which is the Natal Midlands district, which is a, traditionally the ANC has done very well. That includes the provincial capital, Peter Maritzburg. Then we move to the southern part of KwaZulu Natal. Now, this was Jacob Zuma's great gift, that area of KwaZulu Natal, which nears the Eastern Cape. Sure. Okay. Zuma turned that into an a, it was a landslide area for the ANC. Places like Port Shepston and Zumkulu, particularly the Harry Gwala district. And then, of course, the big daddy of them all, the big prize of them all, Durban, uh, Etiquani municipality. So we have seen the IFP win a lot of wards in the northern part. They've shocked the ANC in sweet waters in Peter Maritzburg. They've won a ward off the local party in a traditional ANC stronghold in the south. And they have won a ward in Etiquani. That's a great story because the IFP's growth isn't just in one particular area. Sure. Can they keep that momentum going? Can they play that out in highly densified townships on election day, that remains to be seen. With regards to Chris Pappas, remember the DA does have quite a lot of minority voters, and by that I mean white and Indian voters. It's the largest Indian population in in South Africa. I think this is an area, it's the one province where I've said for the last, uh, since 2021, where I think the DA can grow. Um, That I think Indian voters, for a variety of reasons, feel more uh, are easier remember there are a lot of local Indian parties like the minority front I think the DA with the right candidate folks on the right issues can do well there and I think Papas can energize minority voters and possibly some black young black urban voters as well don't as I said earlier remember Malema there might be a Malema effect that those who are turning on the EFF in by-elections might come back to the EFF in elections and remember now What's the million dollar question because I'm going to tell is what's Jacob Zuma going to do? Will he endorse the ANC? If he does endorse them, will it be early on? Will he actively campaign for them? Um, or will he do what Thabo Mbeki did in, if I think it was 2021 or 2016, where it took a very long time to endorse them? And in the, in, in, in the end, the endorsement was like a backhanded compliment. So because he still looms large. So that's the issue with who South Africa is actually voting for our exclusive interview with Wayne Sussman. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it and haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please just give that to us so we can continue to get you shows and episodes just like this. And just another reminder that the full version of every single episode sits in podcast form on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And the extended version of this episode you just watched on Spotify and Apple Podcasts features Wayne talking about a bunch of other interesting stuff like the rise of the Patriotic Alliance amongst colored voters and like whether or not voters who may choose not to vote for the ANC will actually muster themselves to go and vote for a different party instead of just staying away from the polls on election day and what effect that will have in 2024. Thank you so much for watching the next episode of The Issue with Dan Corder is out in a week. Ciao.